Welcome to your 30-second Java tutorial. Today we're going to talk about methods again. So this will be part two of our method series. I think part one was a few episodes ago. And this might actually just serve as a review session, but I wanted to point out some more uh, idiosyncrasies with methods um, that you might not be aware of. Now first, uh, again, you probably already know this by now, but this is the calling method. And calling methods always send arguments to the receiving method, okay? And that's the fancy term. They will call it an argument. So if you ran into some guy with a, you know, a nerd pack on and you said, hey, I'm passing a value, he might say, actually, you're passing an argument. But that's just a fancy way of saying, hey, I'm passing a value. So again, just be aware of that. This is an actual argument, technically, that's getting passed to this receiving method. And this is technically called a parameter. But, you know, a lot of people think of this more as a placeholder, right? It's receiving the value, and it's a place where the value is held in. We've called that, in fact, I've called that uh, a placeholder in previous tutorials. But in reality, it is a local variable. This is actually a local variable, guys. And if you want to call it a parameter, that's fine. But it's actually a local variable. And if you put a parameter here, or a local variable, or a placeholder, whatever you want to call it, this method now must receive something. So always keep that in mind. When you populate this, we have to populate it with something. Otherwise, we're going to run into IntelliSense errors. And you'll notice once we uh, declare the variable up here in these parentheses, we can now use it down here. Now, you'll see this tree 2 right here where we declared the variable here and assigned the value. So this is different from trees because trees, we had the value passed into the local variable right here. Here we actually declared it and assigned a value. So we did not put this one in the parenthesis. So just to make that distinction. And of course we know by now, if you use the void keyword, this does not return a value to the calling method down here, right? It will not return a value. It'll just go ahead and do this system.out.print. And when it hits this curly bracket here, it'll exit and that's it. Nothing comes back to the calling method. And that's basically what a return value means. It returns it to the calling method. If it's void, it doesn't go back. Now here's a little bit more. When we pass this value to this method up here, we do not actually change this value. I want, I want you guys to be aware of that. So when it comes and it gets passed in up here, there's a little bit of magic that occurs before this value gets to the receiving method. And what happens is Java actually makes a copy of this. So if we came over here and there's a box over here, it actually would make a copy of the value seven and then pass it into this number trees method. So this original value is never affected. That stays at seven. And then the copy that goes on from here gets passed into this method over here. And then that's when we work against this local variable's value, which is now seven. So let's go ahead and run this. And we get a 12. So what happened again is we made a copy of this seven. It then got passed into our receiving method and it was set to seven. And then we said, hey, this local variable trees equals itself plus one, which was eight. And then we declared and assigned a value to this local variable trees two and said, hey, that equals four. And then when we did a print, we added the two together and therefore we got 12. And let's go ahead and close out of this. And uh, then of course down here, we did a system.out.print, a little bit different here. We said, hey, we're gonna call this return number method. And of course we know now that this is a return method because we because first we didn't use the void keyword and we used int here. So this has to return an int. So what happens is we pass the value of 55 into this int x, which again is a local variable. It came down here and added one to it, which made it 56. And then we said return it back to the calling method. And then this prints out the value. So this actually is returned to the calling method. And the key point here is when you declare a method is gonna return something, the data type of the value that comes in here has to match the data type that's being returned here. These two have to match, otherwise you're gonna have problems. The main point here is that, I guess I'm trying to stress is there's all these different idiosyncrasies, sometimes five or six type of idiosyncrasies for a particular concept. So like, you know, this is can be called a parameter. You could call it a local variable. We could call it a placeholder. People refer to these things differently. And so just keep aware of that. And I'll try to point some of them out to you so that when you hear them and, and people are calling them different names, you'll be able to sort that out because that confused me for a while too. People would say, well, that's an argument. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I thought I'm just passing the value down here. Here. I didn't know it was an argument. Well, it is technically. So anyways, I will see you guys in the next video.